I think some people want to know what other people are doing so they can decide whether or not that person should be doing it or not. <laughs> Saying it out loud makes me laugh because I can't imagine living life like that. Can't imagine that's much uh, a very good way to live. I bet you a lot of people like that end up uh, either running their own com companies or uh, uh, succeeding in a, a management structure that's caustic or toxic. I remember there was like I remember like an outside review um, looking at a, a company that was faltering. It was a, a state-funded uh, company, and they called the management structures toxic. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, my point is, I used to, when I was little, I used to fantasize about being left alone. I swear I did. Here's the fantasy. I used to dream that I was, and I mean, not dream dream, but like, I used to visualize that I was uh, out on a country road in the nighttime in, uh, in torrential dumping rain. And I was, uh, I would hide in a, like a culvert. Uh, a drainage pipe that had no water flowing through it, feet first, and I'd be underneath the road with my head back from the opening, and there's no shoulder to the road, and so people would just be whizzing by, looking forward to where their lights shone, and they wouldn't pull off to the side because there was no room, and uh, it's nighttime, so no one could see, and it's pouring down rain, so no one wants to get out of their car, and people just go by, and they wouldn't even know I was there. And I was kind of comparing that to my house. Uh, the sound of the rain on the roof and cars driving by is the only sounds I hear. I'm not near anybody's home. I never hear anybody talking or their music or anything like that. Um, I only hear them coming and going. Sometimes in the summer especially I hear them uh, walking down the road. It's a dirt road and I hear their feet crunching. Um, and sometimes they're walking back from the bar drunk. Sometimes I can hear them trying to be quiet while they're going by my house. Um, because uh, a lot of the people who, who live around me are really, really poor. There's some people living uh, in a, I don't know what you call that, a, a, the sub-economy, a black economy. The, uh, there's a couple prostitutes and pimps and uh, there's a couple people uh, living really close together that basi that sell drugs and, and a lot of times in especially good weather they sell them on the street it's an open air drug market and all these people not only do they leave me alone and mind their own business um, but uh, they're all really nice to me as well and none of them look at me and think I wonder if I should interfere with that guy's life I mean I'm living uh, illegally on the street well not illegally um, I guess technically uh, I could get a, a, a citation if uh, the city asked me to move and I didn't move I'd get um, basically parking tickets I suppose until I did move uh, but no one's gonna do that unless someone complains and no one's gonna be complaining because I live around people that for whatever reason don't look at me and think I wonder if I should approve or disapprove of this guy's lifestyle because frankly, I mean, I don't care about the open-air drug markets. I don't care about the prostitution. Um, I don't see any negative effects of it, um, uh, especially on me. Um, but I don't see, there's not fights, there aren't needles laying around, uh, there isn't used condoms thrown on the street. Like, um, these people, as, as far as it could be said, are professional. They're professional. Uh, there's that some sort of outside of society. Society. Uh, they're familiar with it, and so they're in a way they're familiar with me. I'm not a part of mainstream society. I'm absolutely no threat to them. Nobody living in a, a, a wooden shack on the street <laughs> is going to be calling the police. Uh, they probably don't. I, I might not even, have, as far as they're concerned, I probably don't even own a phone if I'm living in a wooden box. But I always, I always smile and wave. I never, I hardly ever stop and talk. Um, I every once in a while, because they own dogs, uh, the drug dealers own dogs, and they see me with my dog, and sometimes they say, "Hey, great dog," or something like that. You know, just like 
we're not avoiding talking to each other, but we're not talking, if you know what I mean. Even though, you know, it's been going on for years. I say, hi, how's it going? I wave to them as I drive by. Um, and when I first was there, uh, the, one of the pimp and prostitute used to bring my dog food. Um, and, uh, but they stopped doing it. But they would, uh, I think they stopped doing it because the, uh, the pimp uh, got hurt. And uh, I think it was his hip or his back or something. And he didn't want, he was afraid that my dog would jump up on me. And also my dog would always bark when they walked away. And they're always like, okay, now don't bark at us. You know, as, as they'd walk away and he'd always bark. And so they tried to avoid that. So I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that there's a, a society of people who um, don't interfere with other people's lives. They don't judge other people's lives. They just live their own. And it's weird that they're living illeg illegally. And like there's people that like maybe like embrace the system and all they can think about is, is everyone around me following the rules? What a way to live. <laughs>